Hi, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Arizona. This is a state with a personal connection for me. I have friends and family in Arizona, and I did my doctoral work at ASU. So I have to tell you, it does not give me any pleasure whatsoever to deliver this particularly rough forecast. For Arizona, I think the best thing I can say is that if you are a real Arizona person, a real desert person, and you are sick of all these people from California moving in, and you are sick of all the golf courses and all the lawns, you are gonna like this forecast. Let's get to the details. Now, I'm sure you are aware in Arizona, we are several years into a very severe drought. There was a fabulously enormous rainstorm this year, dropped a year's worth of rain in a day, and that helps for sure. But we are looking at a long-term drought forecast and it's a serious drought forecast. The probability is high that this drought we are facing is the cyclic drought that this part of the world faces every few hundred years and that the cyclic drought is being intensified by climate change. The majority of Arizona's water is surface water. We see that water when we look at, say, the Central Arizona Project Canal. All that surface water is under real stress. There are water reductions that have been declared for next year in 2022. It's happening now. These cuts are gonna be devastating for farmers. They'll be losing about half of their water supply in Pinal County, but there's no way we can supply everyone with their full water allotment. There's just not enough water to go around. This drought would be a problem all on its own, but it's a bigger problem when we look at the increased temperatures and increased hot season length that are being forecast for this state. Just a second, let's look at our historical changes in temperature. So this is historical data from uh, 1901 to 2016. We can see this heat map for how temperatures have changed across the Southwest. And we see that over here, by Yuma, very important agricultural region, and moving up into uh, the Phoenix area, there have already been temperature increases around two degrees over the last hundred years. And we know that as it gets hotter for longer, plants are gonna require more water to survive. So increased heat means increased water needs. And as we look at how much more heat we're gonna get, how much longer the hot season is gonna get, you want to check out this uh, figure with projected increases in hot days. Just one second. Scroll down here and zoom in. These projected increases in heat are for the 2050 period. And look at this key. This is intense. If we get into this dark red area, we're talking about two months more of days over 90 degrees. If we're looking at this sort of orange here, pumpkin orange, you're looking at a month. So if we look at this, there's, there's just no one that's gonna be spared the heat in Arizona. And we, we all know it's pretty long hot season already. You're looking at uh, the heat coming for Tucson, very hot, up to about two months more of hot days a year. Up in Navajo Nation, it's not looking good, you know, five weeks more hot season a year. Phoenix, we're looking at another couple of weeks at least, and maybe month really. And the mountains, the heat won't be as bad. You can see the heat never is in the mountains, but look at how tight those margins are around the mountainous area. Those little sky islands, they're already isolated ecosystems and they're gonna be very isolated indeed. Flagstaff, you can see on this map, that you're not gonna escape the warm up entirely either. In, even in Flagstaff, you're looking at a couple extra weeks of hot season a year, a couple extra weeks above 90 every year. And all of this heat, all of these big increases in extreme heat and heat length, this is gonna have a huge impact on our agricultural zones. Let's take a look at that. So over here, we've got our historical agricultural zones. And in, uh, Arizona, we can see that historically a lot of the state has had a pretty hard freeze up in the north. We can see the Flagstaff here is a very distinct area, very distinct ecosystem. And then look at these projected changes. You will see that these are farther out, more towards the end of the century. So dial it back a little bit, but still what we're seeing here, check out this dark line along the Colorado River. It's gonna be very hot down in the river valley further increasing evaporation of the water that we need to feed the rest of the Southwest. And these are just enormous projected agricultural shifts, bigger than anywhere else I've seen in the nation, up to four zone agricultural shifts. We're gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna talk through this a little bit. Over here by Yuma, 
let's look at Yuma. If you eat salad in the winter, you're eating produce that was grown in uh, Yuma here in the United States. And look at that shift. I, I wish I had good data on how the winter high temps will be affected by these changes, which is so crucial to know if you're growing crops in the winter season in Arizona, but I don't have that data. It certainly seems like the growing season for winter crops is going to be shorter with these big changes in hot season length and these big ag zone shifts here. It's probably look worth looking into crops that are more bolt resistant too, that are going to be less sensitive to the occasional hot day. If you check it up out here by Flagstaff, look at this size of the foothill distinct ecological region there. It's projected to shrink so dramatically. Oh, it's a very distinctive, to me, a very pretty part of the state. And we're going to get a total ecosystem shift in those footholds. Almost the entire state is projected to lose the hard freeze in the winter and substantial portions of the state are gonna lose even mild frost. Under these long-term projections, it will not freeze in substantial portions of the state. Any freeze at all, any frost at all would be kind of a freak event in the future in substantial portions of the state. And of course, this is gonna have dramatic impacts on ecosystems in the state. In your forested parts of the mountains, these hot, dry conditions are likely to cause substantial tree death, and that will increase risks for wildfire. I think we're already seeing those trends. We're going to see plant communities across the state change. With all this heat, from a human health perspective, you want to make sure you can keep the air on. And we are looking at some projected drops for power generation in the state. Let's go over there. So Arizona is looking at pretty consistent projections for 2050 that due to the increased heat, the power generating stations that they currently have will have uh, maybe 15% overall drop, if you look at the key here, in power generating capacity. That is the sort of drop that can be made up for with distributed rooftop solar. And if I were you, I would want to have solar on my house in Arizona. It's a great region for solar. Solar is highly effective in Arizona. And if you have your network set up so that you can pull your house off the grid, if there's a power failure in your neighborhood and rely on your own solar, you can protect your family from extreme heat conditions. It's a great backup if you want to be here long term. But let's take a minute. Let's bring this all together. The water issues that this state is facing are very serious and they're likely to get worse. If you want to be in Arizona for the long term, you're gonna to wanna to think hard about how you can cultivate some water security. The surface water is not looking good and the groundwater in Arizona has dropped very seriously, particularly in Southern Arizona. If you wanna be in Arizona, you've gotta love it hot, you've gotta love it dry, you've gotta love the desert and really care about being there sustainably with the desert. Because all that water, we can't just think about ourselves. We have to think about letting the water go around the needs of the rest of the state, the rest of the life forms in the state to have access to that scarce water. There's a future for Arizona, for the cities of Arizona, for the people of Arizona, but it's gonna be different. There's gonna be a need for much more serious water conservation on every level that's really amplified by an increase in temperatures and increased hot season length. But knowing what's ahead, that's the first step towards getting what we need to get ready for these changes. So I hope this forecast gives you information you need to make decisions about your life as we move towards 2050. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe, help get the message out there. There is hope, we can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.